of him. That was four, wasn't it? And I saw, yeah. I saw three. I saw that one coming close to me, or Vast pointed out. And then behind him was two shadows. I feel inspired and humbled. I'm inspired by the way that they come over to us and are curious and they have no qualms of just coming right up to us and giving us a, a bit of a nudge to see what we are. Like their interaction with strangers is really impressive, but at the same time, it's humbling to be in the water with something so huge. I remember the first time I was in the rib. I was quite nervous when the boat finally went out. Because um, I, start, I started thinking about how deep the sea actually is and how small I would be in that deep sea. I think it's a two-way thing. We don't really know that much about pilot whales. So we're immersing ourselves into their world but at the same time, they don't really know much about us. So together, I think, um, we're, by interacting with them, it's, it's like a two-way learning process. It's just, the thing with seeing them under the water is that you see how smoothly and, and easily they move in the water. And, that's something you don't see when you only look at the fin. And it's, it's beautiful, it's amazing how they just like float around when they're, they're super, he super heavy animals and it looks so easy for them to move around and it's something you don't forget, it's, it's really beautiful. Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> what? I always just like this. What? I've just been doing some research and um, apparently that's a really aggressive sign. Okay, so since we've been working on the rib, we've seen lots and lots of different whales, some new and some that have been documented in the past. We've been able to start putting the whales into different family groups, which is really exciting. We've been able to work out which are the older whales, and then we can look at the juveniles and any markings that they have on their fins, and then we can track them in the future to see how they grow and develop, and then how they start their new families onwards. Also, it's been really cool being underwater because we can actually have a look at the profile of the whales, so we can identify them a lot more easily as well. We can see the scars, we can see... Uh, some of them have a definite expression on their face that we can recognise time and again. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it, it's very exciting to be able to look at the whales as individuals, not just the fins that we see above the surface. So when I decided to start making this documentary, I had the idea, but... It was only a concept, I didn't have any real content, and that's why Luke came in. Luke rapidly became a force in the drive of this documentary through his marine biology experience and just his knowledge on station like behaviour. And through that, we, it, gave, it gave the team a lot more drive into wanting to learn more about pilot worlds, I suppose. He also became an important creative input into the documentary through helping its structure and progress, containing our underlying like key factors of what we wanted to include which were to encourage people to like, learn more about these animals as well as get involved in trying to save them.
Well, <laughs> at the moment I'm studying towards my Masters in Marine Biodiversity Conservation. So primarily I look at um, areas where conservation needs to take place in order to secure the safety of uh, mammals, turtles and predominantly sharks. That's my real specialty. The things I do for conservation I'm here about all unsocial buggers. <laughs> I'm doing research on how pilot whales interact and communicate with each other, and then the way they communicate and interact with us, the swimmers. Um, and what we found is that different pods and different families of um, pilot whales have different ways of communicating with each other. As soon as we, um, the swimmers go into the water, um, the pilot whales start clicking, uh, making a clicking noise, and this clicking sound is the way they um, echolocate us. So they're trying to figure out who we are and what we're doing there um, by making these clicking sounds. And um, I can show you what it sounds like. clicking that you hear and then it goes on to the squeaking and then I'll show you a bit later on um, it's different squeaking because we what we also found is there's two um, distinctive squeaking noises that um, that we can hear one of them is the squeaking noise that they make within the pod so that's how they communicate with each other and then there's another squeaking that they primarily do uh, when we are swimming with them in the water and and this is a lot more playful, this squeaking this is a and in this particular interaction they were really close to us and they were actually interacting with us in loads, coming towards us, swimming away again, coming back and it clearly shows that they are playful and um, squeaking is a lot different than from the squeaking noise that they make within the pod. What we're hoping to do is um, doing some more research and um, hopefully in the future we'll be able to um, ID them from their um, noises, from their squeaks and their clicks maybe and then it'll be a better way to get to know them more and get to know the different pods and their different families. She's been looking at the way that they communicate with each other and trying to put them together in families, pods and communities. She's been working really hard using the hydrophone and really trying to do something a little bit new with the research to try and develop something that hasn't been done before and hopefully it'll open the eyes of the locals so they can see that the whales are a lot like us. They're, they have a lot of human characteristics, the way they live together and the way they communicate differently with different whales. Trying to, uh, I'm trying to set like this, this is all the colour levels. This so is what I'm trying to do: is limit it. So what I, what won't happen is I won't get these corners won't start flashing like they are now because I'm limiting the actual colour, like how far the colours can go. So like it's trying to spray off here. You can kind of control how far it separates from like the medium, and it should be a stairs bit when you remember the footage. So your blues and your greens are most prominent, and your red just gives like the greys and the part of the world, and the dark colours. And that's what I'm doing so far. For this documentary I needed someone 
um, we could create media expertise and uh, when we found Chris, um, he's been perfect for the project. He has great determination, uh, enthusiasm, lots of creativity and of course huge interest in conservation. With his media skills, he's able to take footage and present it in a, a way which is digestible and um, provocative. You get a lot more practical barriers in terms of actually filming underwater than using different camera equipment, what you're not really used to. But yeah, you get really frustrated sometimes. You laugh to hide your tears. We've got, from our beautiful music producer Nick Kingsley, we've got Serious Wales, which is a uh, imaginatively named Chris White's documentary. It's got a lot of atmosphere to it. Grandy. Yeah. And then we've got this, my favourite, <coughs> which you'll hear throughout the documentary. And then you've got this beautiful, really atmospheric. And then you've got a complete contrast, this stuff. So, what sort of kind of What's this going to bring out in the viewer, hopefully? Um, well, the other two are quite like slow-paced and atmospheric, while well, this one is a lot more forward-progressing, in my opinion. Like, it will kind of, I don't know, hopefully promote a bit of like inspiration in the audience. <laughs> For the project we needed someone who was an expert in communications and as we're in Tenerife and we are English students predominantly, we needed someone who could speak the language and communicate with the local people, the fishermen and the school as well. So to have Natalie on board was a great asset to us. I would like to know and investigate how they behave in different ways during other parts of the day and yes, that's it. Y por eso eh, nos gustaría saber si sería posible que eh, salgamos del, al mar con el RIP eh, anoche también. Bueno, perfecto. ¿Y sería posible esta noche ya? Ah, bueno, perfecto. ¿A las seis? Ok, muchas gracias. Entonces nos vemos a las seis esta noche. Ok, adiós. A un grupo de nueve por la mañana. De nueve. Pero con bebés. Sí, dos bebecitos. Dos. Dos. No, pero muy cerca, muy cerca. No, cerca no. Era pues cerca, cerca. Como cinco metros. Pero eso no es cerca. Y no te da miedo. No, no, no. Son mansas. She's been great talking to the locals and encouraging them to get involved with the project and helping us in the boats, as well as the work she's done with the whales. I came out here to learn about wildlife documentary and I know since Spinner is 
it was cool. I've never done anything like this before, so it's kind of a test for all of us. Because I mean, none of us have a proper experience in the water, and so yeah, it's just a test really to see how close we can get with pilot wells, I suppose. So the only thing you see when you're in the tourist bus is the, is the dorsal fin, and it's beautiful seeing a dorsal fin and seeing the head pop up and stuff. But it's nothing compared to seeing them under the water. It's it's just amazing, like I've said before, it's something that you, you, it's, it's, you can't describe to other people how it is to, to, to snorkel with them. And it... I think that as soon as you into the water with the pilot whales, all normal research stops. Everything that I've done before, all the experiences I've had, uh, come to a complete standstill. You're face to face with these huge animals and you're there kind of exchanging a glance, you're there in their world and suddenly it's not so much that you're doing some research on them, they're doing their research on you as well. They're coming up to you investigating what you are, what you're doing in their, in their home. Um, so, from a research point of view, it's been really enlightening to find out that it's not just me doing the research in the water, that they're actually having a good look at us and finding out what we're doing there and, and how we exist in their world. You don't get scared, you're just like anxious to see, because you see these fins coming towards you and you're like, whoa, that's big. And then you look underwater and it's just peaceful. Like, it's a completely different world when you're underwater. It's, it's incredible, it's just, it's just a surreal feeling, really. They're, they're such beautiful creatures and the way they swim is, makes it look so easy, the way they just float in, in the water. And um, apart, from, well, apart from me feeling humbled, it's also incredibly interesting to see how they interact with each other. And even with us, we have, we've had some interactions uh, in which it's, it's noticeable that they, they notice us. And yeah, it's incredibly, it's really amazing. You never really know what to expect. I mean, you go out and you go swimming with them, and it's, every, every time's different, completely unpredictable. So you have, to be, you have to be really adaptable and kind of change to around the situations. There's definitely like a mutual respect. They've got no reason to harm us, but obviously they could do if they wanted to. And sometimes they come up swimming with us with calves. So I think definitely on their front they are trusting us. I think they're trusting us to swim with the calves who so are like tiny and really like vulnerable. But at the same time, yeah, we trust them not to bite us and take us down. Because something's happened before, it could happen again. But it doesn't really go through your mind when you swim with them because they're just so peaceful. You feel like you build up a certain trust with them. You're, you're invading their territory, but at the same time, they're letting you. They're letting you come up to them. They're letting you interact with them. And I think that's something really special. It's been important to have three of us on board in this project with the research, the media production and communications. All three of these are essential. Without one, the other two wouldn't work on their own. Without the research, the documentary wouldn't be based on anything solid, anything reliable. Without the media production, the information that we've researched and the data that we've recovered wouldn't be able to be presented in a way that is digestible and a way that brings about emotions from the audience. On the communication side, if we didn't have a communications expert, we wouldn't be able to speak to the people around here. We wouldn't be able to converse with them, work out which boats they were going on, work out how a strategy to put the project together. And that's essential to making a documentary like this. By working with each other, as individuals, we've developed the skills that we came here with. And as such, this has given us an opportunity to move on to bigger and better things in the future. After leaving Tenerife, um, I'll be going to Cuba for five months 
My initial plan there was to just go to university uh, for my course, but since I've done this project now for um, three months, uh, my ideas have changed a bit and now I really want to do more conservation work. So I looked into Cuba a bit more and I found that the manatee there is endangered um, because of human destruction of its habitat. And my plan now is to raise awareness there through my communication skills and speak to the local people to make them aware of this problem and maybe I'll even be able to set up a project for the manatee there. Moving on from this project, I want to use the skills that I've developed here, not just my research skills but also some of the media production and communication skills that I've learnt from the other two members of the dive team. My great passion is sharks and when I go to South Africa I want to work with the great white shark, I want to find out more about them, their habits and do a lot more research on them. When I find out more about them it will help me with my further conservation activities. Since working on this project, conservation is now in the forefront of my mind because I feel a lot more motivated to do work because I feel it can make a difference doing the films and documentaries what I do. So from this, after this, I'm going to finish my last year off at Coventry University. Then I'm going to go to Sierra Leone and I plan to expose the illegal logging trade and then continue this process of exposing people which is abusing nature. Swimming with pilot whales has changed my idea of conservation simply because being in the water with them makes you realise that they are very similar to humans uh, through their social behaviour. Since working on this project my eyes have been opened to a different form of conservation. In the future I hope to work alongside people such as Chris and Natalie in order to produce a documentary that will affect the local communities where endangered animals are found. This project has changed the direction of my career as I realise I can work in a field where I actually make a difference with the work I'm producing. Thank you.